When I was a little girl, my best friends across the street were Catholic. Actually, I didn't know about anything having to do with religion or even Jesus. And they informed me that I would not be able to go to heaven, but I would be able to go to purgatory um, because the Jews killed Jesus and um, that's what would keep me out of heaven. They're also the first people that ever told me about the Holocaust and people being made into soap and lampshades and I had no idea. 1975, I got to travel with Bob Dylan on the Rolling Thunder Review on two six-week tours and then a six-week European tour. And on that tour was Joni Mitchell and Joan Baez and Ramblin' Jack Elliott and Roger McGuinn from a group called The Birds. And we hung out with people like Ringo Starr and Jack Nicholson and just it was a very, very exciting, very fun time, you know, very heady, just um, playing all over Europe, staying in the best hotels, riding a private train through, you know, six different countries. Um, it was great. It was everything that you would think when those tours were over. Rather than being elated, I felt completely empty, completely lost, completely, I just, like I had climbed a mountain and I looked over and there was nothing on the other side. And I just was asking myself, what is life all about? If it's not about, you know, having things that are just, just having fun, if it's not that, if it's not even that your art or your talent can fulfill you because these people that I traveled with were so artistic, so talented, but they had their own issues, what was life about? It got to a certain point where I, um, I was so frustrated with life that I determined I will give myself 35 days, and I wrote this in a diary, I give myself 35 days to find a new way of approaching life. I am just sick of this brain inhabiting this body and just the way I even thought about things. During that 35 days, I contracted an illness called Bell's palsy. I went, as I was going to bed one night, I was brushing my teeth and water came squirting out of the side of my mouth. And I lived alone in an apartment at that point. And I thought to myself, I'm gonna go to bed and I'm gonna wake up paralyzed. And sure enough, when I woke up in the morning, half my face was paralyzed. Bob's girlfriend, this big black Baptist woman, grabbed me by the hands and said to me, she started praying for me in the name of Jesus. And I remember that when she was finished, I walked out of that trailer and I was stunned. And I looked around and I thought, what? was that and the next day I actually started seeing an improvement and feeling an improvement in my face and I actually did end up going to Europe on that six week Bob Dylan tour. One day I was out in the desert with a girlfriend of mine and we were in a motel and I remember um, on my search I was still looking for truth and I opened up the little drawer in the hotel room and there was a red Gideon Bible. So I stole that Bible and I brought it home with me. And I remember opening it up, never having read the Bible before, just opening it up to Matthew and reading the words, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And I remember thinking to myself, whoever this Jesus is, I could use a friend like him. I had a voice teacher who took me to a big church with his wife and with him. And there were about a thousand people there and they were all just singing songs to God and enjoying themselves and their hands were raised. And I'm looking around the room thinking to myself, are these people crazy and I'm the only sane one here? Or do they know something that I don't know? I came back really kind of just desperately more wanting to know what is this life all about. And um, a friend of mine gave me a book by C.S. Lewis called Mere Christianity. And I was in a bar in Austin, Texas 
with my brother and my cousin's band who was playing. And I started reading that book. And as I'm reading the book, it was as if these scales literally fell off my eyes. I remember I started laughing thinking, oh my gosh, I know who Jesus is. Because C.S. Lewis said on page 42 in that book that you cannot call Jesus a prophet or a wise man or a good man. He allowed people to worship him and fall at his feet. Either he was who he claimed to be or he was a raving lunatic as crazy as a poached egg, a megalomaniac. But there is no room to call him good. He was either who he was or he was a madman. When I got back to California, a friend of mine took me to a church, the vineyard, and as I was leaving church, there in the back of the church is Bob Dylan, his girlfriend Mary Alice, and she looked at me and she said, girl, you've got to go to discipleship school. And I said, no, I need a job. And she said, seek first the kingdom of God and all else will be added unto you. And sure enough, I went to Bible school for five months, five days a week, four hours a day with Bob and Mary Alice, myself and nine other people. Today, um, I'm married to Marty Getz and we have one daughter who's an adult and I work as Marty's manager, record producer, booking agent, travel agent, and uh, he is my best friend, but I have even a better friend, and it's Yeshua, Jesus. And I have a very simple, childlike faith that he loves me. <laughs>